Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives, uh, still on engineering science N1, uh, working on dynamics. So we've got the question that we are going to work uh, with from the question paper of August 2021. Uh, so we have uh, 5.1, where we are given that Peter's car out of petrol, okay? Peter's car ran out of petrol, okay? He and William pushes the car to the nearest petrol station. Peter pushes with a force of 45 Newton and William pushes with a force of 52 Newton. All right. Both push the car in the easterly direction. Graphically, determine the resultant of the force uh, of them pushing the car. Take note, guys. We've got two guys who are pushing the car in the same direction to the east. So remember, from our north pole, this is our north east, south, and west. So if you are going to the east, you are going to the positive. So both are pushing to the positive, okay? We have got the, the one with the 45 Newton and another one with uh, 52 Newton, both referring to the, what, to the positive. So the resultant is going to be the sum of the two, all right? Which is, uh, in this case, we've got 45 and 52. So if we add 45 plus 52 Newton, we are going to obtain uh, 97 Newton and going to the same direction, which is to the east. So we are still to the east, all right? So that was the resultant. Uh, on one point, on 5.2, we are given Aubrey and Tato are two players in a soccer uh, game. Aubrey kicks a soccer, uh, sorry, kicks a corner to Tato, who scores a goal. The movement of the ball is shown in Fig 3. Graphically determine the resultant movement of the ball. Okay, so this is the description that we are given in this case. All right. So what you are going to do, if you are given to draw this or to represent this graphically, you are going to measure everything properly as we are given from the diagram. Okay. So here we are supposed to take a closer look on the information that we have. Like for, for from this point, we can note that these forces, the first force, uh, the first distance of 32 meters here, it's taken from the vertical and horizontal line, which is like this. So I'm just going to show you what you're going to have on the or on the your on your final diagram. So you're going to have this as your north pole. Okay. So from the north of this point, what you do is that you have to measure the angle of 45 degrees of which it, this can be difficult to do measuring from this side. So what you do is that you know that this is a North Pole where we have got uh, North and East. So if this is 45 degrees, it means also this angle is 45 degrees. Remember, this is 90 degrees. So you measure 45 degrees from this side. Okay, this angle is going to be 45 degrees because already you have got what? A vertical line. Then you choose a scale that you're going to work with. Uh, maybe we can choose one centimeter representing uh, 10 meters. If it is like that, then this is going to be 3,2. So it's going to be 32 divided by 10. You measure 3,2 centimeters. At this point, let's say this is where you are now. You want to know how you are going to draw from this point to this point uh, from this force. Okay, this is what you're going to do. Remember that this line where we've got 15 degrees a year, we do not just draw a line. Okay, this is what you're going to do. Since this angle is 45 degrees a year, we are now referring to a horizontal line and a horizontal line. And there's a line which is the transversal here. So this angle and this angle, they are actually equal. Why? These are Z angles, okay? So that means if this angle is 45, you are going to measure from this point to this point an angle of 45 degrees, all right? So if you measure 45 degrees, it allows you now to draw the line. So now you can draw a line because you've got your 45 degrees, all right? Why are we worried with this? Because we need to draw 15 degrees, which is having what? 29 meters, of which according to the scale, it is going to be 29 divided by two, which is 2,9 centimeters, okay? So what you're going to do now, you, from this line, 
you measure 15 degrees, all right? Once you measure 15 degrees, you draw your line, which is what? 2,9 centimeters to this point, all right? That is uh, where we have uh, 29 meters. So to find the resultant, you join from the starting point to the end point, all right? So this is your starting point to the end point like this, all right? You are then going to join. So here I'm just showing you a sketch, but you're supposed to do this accurately, okay? So if you are to measure this line, this is your resultant. You are going to obtain three centimeters in this case. But remember we said one centimeter is going to represent 10 meters. So you multiply by 10, which is going to be 30 meters, all right? Then the angle that you're going to take, you can even take from the west of this line, all right? We can take it from the west. Remember, this is our north, uh, this is our west, our east, and our south. So from the west to the north, this is the angle that we can take. And if you are to measure this angle, this is going to give us 81 degrees. So the resultant is going to be 30 meters west, 91 degrees going to the, to the north, all right? So this is 91 degrees to the, to the north. So that is how we are going to do. So this is, I'm showing you a sketch here, but you're supposed to draw, to draw this separately using that uh, uh, idea that you're having. So like I said, uh, if you've got any, 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 any problem here, guys, let me know so that we can bring the instruments together, we draw and see accurately how you're supposed to have this, okay. 5.3, we are given that Victor and Tuso are on, on a road trip, uh, on a long stretch road. They travel at a constant speed of 220 kilometers per hour. So we are given uh, the speed. All right. Draw a distance time graph of the information. All right. So we are given to draw the distance time graph of this information. Uh, hint, draw the graph for three hours, all right. So here we are given the time that our time is supposed to be three hours. So what is the distance now? So take note here, we are given a speed. So we are supposed to calculate the total distance, all right? Remember that distance is equivalent to speed times time. So we are going to have the speed of 220 times the time that you are given, which is three. So if you multiply, this is going to be 660 uh, kilometers. Remember, this is kilometers per hour. So you are going to have this in kilometers. Since our time is given in hours, our distance in kilometers, and we, uh, we can have our sketch here, having this in the same unit that we are having, kilometers and hours, okay? But now we are supposed to choose a proper scale to work with. All right, take note, we are not given a scale here. All right, so let's take this aside, okay? We said we have got a distance here, this is 5.31. We have got a distance which is 660 kilometers and our time is given as three hours. So we can choose a scale to maybe we can choose uh, here, one centimeter or one centimeter to represent uh, 100 kilometers. Uh, let's see if it can make sense. Yeah, it can make sense. So it can represent, it can represent 100 kilometers. Then on time, we can choose also, uh, we can just say one centimeter to represent one hour. All right, we can choose that also. So this is uh, what your use of your choice, guys, because you're not given a scale there. All right, so let's see what you're going to have in this case. All right, I'm just going to have my ruler here. So, all right, so this is what you're going to have. Remember, this is distance versus time. So this is our time axis, and we move on to the distance, which is measured in kilometers. If we choose to use these units, it's fine like that. All right, so that is what you're going to have in this case, all right, let's try to just reduce our ruler here. All right, so from this point, uh, we said this is our time. So this is your time axis, which is measured in hours. And this is the distance axis, which is measured in what? In kilometers, all right. 
So as we say that for the time, we say each centimeter represents one hour. So you can say after one centimeter, that's one hour. After one centimeter, two hours. After one centimeter, three hours. It's your choice, guys. You choose a proper scale for you. Uh, on the distance again, one centimeter representing 100 kilometers. That means after one centimeter, we've got 100 kilometers. After one centimeter, 200 kilometers up to up to 600. So this is uh, 300, uh, 400, uh, 500, uh, 600. So to accommodate 660, we can add 700. Okay, so let's say this is where we have our, our 660, let's say at this point here, all right, sorry for that. So let's say we have got our 660 at this point. This is where we have 660 kilometers. At the end, this point must correspond with the time when it is at what? At three kilometers. So these, these two must correspond. All right, so these two are going to correspond like this, okay? So you can even join uh, these to just indicate that the gradient representing the velocity, remember this is distance time. So the gradient of this line or the steepness of this slope is going to represent the velocity, all right? So here just a little bit like this one, you can just join like this, all right? So the steepness of these slopes of this slope that we are given, it represents the velocity. All right, so this is your velocity. But since we are given as distance, so we can write this as speed. So this is going to be speed in kilometers per watt per hour. All right, so that's what we had uh, in this case uh, on three, on question 5.31. Then question 5.32, we are now given a condition now to from the graph, determine how far they have, how far they will travel in one and a half hours. Okay, so what you're going to do is that you take this straight from the graph. Remember this, you have drawn this graph accurately. All right, you have drawn an accurate diagram. So what you're going to do is that you take direct at 1,5, okay? So at 1,5 like this, this is our, our, our graph here. So this was supposed to be taken direct from the graph, okay, 5.32. So at 1.5, let's say this point, you take straight to the graph, okay? Straight to the graph, then straight to the point, that is where we are going to have the corresponding what? The corresponding velocity, okay? So this is, uh, according to my graph, it's not accurately drawn, but from your graph, you are supposed to have an accurate diagram. So the velocity, at that point is going to correspond uh, at, uh, okay, let's check what time are we given? That's one comma, calculate how far. Okay, so that is displacement. Okay, distance, not velocity, because we are, talking, we are referring to the distance here. The distance on this side is going to correspond uh, somewhere at 330, 330 kilometers. All right, so let's say, you have a challenge on answering this typical question. Maybe your graph is not accurately drawn. What can you do? You can use the velocity because of the speed, because remember before we are given that the speed is 220 kilometers per hour. So using this, we can take advantage to say, okay, since we want to calculate the distance, we may remember that we say distance is equal to speed times times time. So we're going to take the speed of 220 kilometers per hour, multiply to the time, which is one and a half. So one and a half as a fraction is same as three over two. We are going to obtain the same answer, which is 330 kilometers. But from the graph, it must correspond at 1.5 straight, it must correspond with 330. So if you are having an accurate graph, it must correspond, okay? So this calculation is just there for, for you to, to, to prove if, uh, if you are having the exact answer, all right? Uh, so that's what we had on question 5.3, uh, 5.4, we are given that Neil, uh, Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon, okay? That's Neil Armstrong, okay? 
was the first man on the moon. His weight, his mass on Earth was 85 kgs. Okay, sorry for this, guys. So given the mass of this guy, which is 85 kgs, then on 5.41, we are given what will his weight be on the moon, okay? If the gravitational acceleration at the moon is 1, uh, 1, 1.6 meters per square second. All right, so this is what we have, guys. We are just going to take uh, the information. Uh, remember, we asked to calculate the weight. So we know that weight is equivalent to the mass times the gravitational acceleration. So the mass of the guy is 85. Why least the gravitational acceleration at the moon or on the moon is given as 1,6. So you multiply with that one. You are no longer use 9,8 because you are given another gravitational acceleration. Okay, so that is what you're going to have. In this case, you have to multiply properly. 85 times 1,6 from your calculator. This is going to give you 136. So this is weight measured in newtons. All right. On 5.42, calculate the weight on Earth. So on Earth, that is where we know that the gravitational acceleration is at what? 9,8. So our weight now is going to be mg, which is the mass does not change. It is going to remain as 85, but now the gravitational acceleration is now at what? 9,8. So if you multiply properly, 85 times 9,8, you are going to obtain 833 Newton. Okay, so that was uh, the application of the question that was needed from this, uh, from this one. So please, let's revise, guys, as much questions as we can, uh, and also from your question papers, textbooks, and the videos that we have on YouTube. Let's, you, let's utilize that information that we have to, to our benefit. Okay, for now, that's what we had till we meet again.